Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm one of the curators here at the Royal Armouries Museum. I have a couple of things to show you today. Uh, firstly, quite run of the mill, uh, maybe not for us every day in the UK, but this is a Sten submachine gun, World War II. Um, getting into the first, the, uh, the opening years of, of the Second World War, Britain had acquired Thompson submachine guns from America, but couldn't get enough and the cost was extremely high. It was something like uh, 45 old pounds, um, far too expensive to turn out enough of these little compact automatic weapons to equip everybody that needed equipping, be that the Home Guard or uh, frontline commando uh, soldiers. So the solution in Britain was uh, what's called the Sten gun, uh, invented by two guys, um, Shepard and Turpin, that's the ST in Sten gun, and EN, um, actually doesn't stand for Enfield, or at least we don't think it does, it stands for England. Um, so, Shepherd, Turpin and England, Sten. This is the Mark II, which was simplified over the Mark I, which has wooden furniture on it, and might be a subject for another day. I'm mainly showing you this to compare it with another thing that I'm about to show you. So it's got the, um, this is common to this as well, um, the 32 round uh, stick or box magazine, attached here. Everything is made out of sheet metal or tubing or simple uh, bar stock, very, very basic materials to make it as quick and easy as possible to make. You could make one of these for two old pounds, which is probably about a hundred pounds today, something like that, versus the Thompson gun, which is a much nicer, much better made and finished gun at 45 pounds. So the obvious solution was this, at least for Britain. Um, even even um, Germany ended up copying these at the end of the war. Uh, now, this was not simple enough for some people, so um, you had the Mark III, which was specifically for companies like Lines Brothers in the UK, who had experience making sheet metal toys, and were, would be, be easy for them to tool up to make something made out of a, a continuous um, folded sheet, was the basic idea there. Um, that was probably a bridge too far, made the gun a bit too cheap and a bit too unreliable, but nonetheless they made almost as many uh, Mark III stands as they did the Mark II here. Um, another solution was this gun. Now, you probably think I've just picked up the same gun. In fact, <laughs> this is different, and I will compare them side by side for you. So, this tube, traditionally this was a, a single drawn steel tube, very strong, very circular, perfectly circular, which it has to be for reliable functioning. There's a big metal bolt moves back and forth in here, and if the body is not perfectly circular, it's going to encounter friction, it's going to slow down, you're going to get a stoppage, um, which is exactly the problem with this solution, because what we did here was instead of drawing out a steel tube, which is expensive and time consuming, they wrapped a sheet of steel over a form and basically beat it until it was that shape, the shape of a keyhole basically, which if I were to show you this in cross section, let's take the butt off so we can do that, that's exactly what that is, so it's the, this is all one metal sheet, wrapped around. Nice and cheap, nice and easy, the problem is you're going to start creating slow, you know, tight spots, basically, and unless your quality control is really good, which it wasn't always, uh, you're going to have problems. So this, is, this was a recall, there was essentially a factory recall of these things in 1943, so this gun shouldn't exist, they were, they were nearly all destroyed, this is a very rare survival of this specific bit of the British World War II manufacturing story. Just going to use this Sten bayonet. <laughs> as a pointing device <laughs> with being very careful not to touch anything. So the difference in construction that I'm talking about is on the top we've got the Mark II standard Sten and you can see there's a join between the sheet metal here of the trigger mechanism housing and the steel tube of the actual body or receiver. They're two separate things. Steel tube, sheet metal, welded on. That's how most Stens were used, uh, sorry, were made and you've got two tack welds there holding the whole thing together and a proper weld at the back. On the rare and unusual recalled gun, 
This is all one piece. You'll see there's no join between the sheet metal of the, of the trigger mechanism housing and the body because it's all one piece of folded metal. So that's a little bit specialist, a little bit technical, but this is also very interesting for another reason. I first encountered this uh, several years ago, um, sitting talking to colleagues in our education department. They have deactivated firearms to allow them to do the, the job that they do, handling with the public, um, not reenactment per se, but doing impression um, dressing and, and holding the appropriate equipment when they do their gallery talks then their events. And one of the guns they had was this one, deactivated. So although it's got moving parts, this is an old spec um, deactivated firearm. No one had noticed the technically interesting aspect, why should they? And even harder to notice was what I happened to notice as I was looking at it and the light fell just right on the side and there's writing on the side of the gun. Wow, what, what does that say? The, oh, well, maybe it's not writing because I can't read it. But the reason I couldn't read it it's not because it's faint, which it is, we're going to struggle to pick this up for you on the camera in fact, but because it's Greek. So there's several lines here of Greek lettering. So my mind is instantly thinking, where, where has this been? What has it done? Because these mass-produced military firearms typically have no story to tell, not individually. They very rarely come to a museum from, from their users, because they don't own the gun. So what was going on? So we start looking at the gun, we start trying to read the markings, and we discover a couple of interesting things. So first of all, we've got the markings on the magazine well. Sten Mark II, that doesn't help much. On the other side, a little bit more helpful, we've got a serial number and a prefix for Fazakali, which was um, a Royal Ordnance factory making these guns um, near Liverpool. Okay, so it's a British-made Sten, that doesn't really narrow it down much either, because most of them were, or a lot of them were. But on the trigger guard here, we've actually got a U with an arrow in it. Uh, now that is, the broad arrow is, is um, the Board of Ordnance, the symbol of the, the Board of Ordnance, or the War Office by this point. The U is actually the indicator for the government of South Africa. So within the, the, the sort of Empire Commonwealth um, at the time, this shows the gun was issued to South Africa. Okay, so we've gone from Britain to South Africa, um, 1942, 1943, it's gone out to South Africa. Well, we don't know what it was used for there precisely, um, but then we've got this Greek writing. So we've now got to connect Britain with South Africa to Greece. So with much digging, um, well, sorry, I say digging, a uh, very helpful Greek contact of mine with a lot of playing around with the camera, we were able to translate this writing here. We're trying here to show you these very faint scratches which would have been more visible when the weapon still had its, its blued finish intact. But there are actually four lines of information here. Um, two words at the top. Hopefully that's catching a bit of light. There's only so much we can do here. Uh, we've then got another two, but the second word is so faint. Then a single word, and then uh, a longer, um, or rather more stretched out, he's, he's scratched it, uh, he's taken more space. This is not neat work that he's done here, but uh, it is there nonetheless. And this actually says, uh, Christophes Elias, I hope is the correct pronunciation of this, of this Greek name, uh, which is actually surname first name, so it's Elias Christophes, is the, is the, what turns out to be Greek Cypriot soldier who used this gun. Then you've got the next line down, um, headquarters company, showing you where, you know, where he was um, based, or what sort of unit he was based with. We've then got um, the Greek acronym, which I won't even attempt to spell out, for the Hellenic force in Cyprus. So we're not talking World War II here, we're talking 1972, the Turkish invasion of Cyprus, and the conflict between Greece and Turkey suddenly very interesting. Clearer on this side, it's been scratched in upside down, strangely. We've, hopefully you can see there, A-K. Again, these are Greek letters, Greek versions of these letters. Uh, and then a separate word, and we believe, this is a little bit more tentative, but the Greeks tell us that this um, is probably artillery squadron. Um, and the implication is it's based at um, CIROS, uh, S-Y-O-R-S. 
So we've got quite a lot of information here that's almost encoded into the gun. It's that faint, that hard to see. And it's uh, thanks to our colleagues in Greece that we were even able to work out what this says. Uh, and then finally, the last little bit of information, Nicosia. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly as well. Um, the physical place where this headquarters company was based, where Elias Christophes um, actually served. So although we couldn't trace the individual soldier's service history, we did try, um, and the, the Greek forces were very helpful in trying to trace him down, it turns out that's quite a generic name, um, and we weren't able to pin him down. Despite that, we've got quite a lot of history wrapped up in this gun, um, from the, sort of the, the British manufacturing effort at the beginning of World War II, to the South African military's use of Sten guns, to the conflict in, in, in Cyprus and a Greek Cypriot soldier who, who physically um, scratched his name into this gun so that we can tell you this story. And I think that's, that's quite wonderful for a bit of sheet metal and, and, and tubing. <laughs>